I want to know as John Asaraf, who has this wealth of knowledge around state management and you know managing how your brain works and how you feel, when things happen like failure, disappointment, um, you know, life situations, sure. do you feel the experience and how do you move through it? Uh, yes, I, I feel the entire um, spectrum of emotions. I feel disappointed. I feel fear. I feel stress, anxiety, worry, uncertainty, doubt. Of course, I feel that. I'm human and I welcome feeling it. The thing that I have learned to do maybe a little bit better than the average bear is to be aware of the feeling and not get too caught up in the feeling. Why? Well, aren't feelings signals? Let me, let me give you a, a, let me just take you over here for just a moment. Imagine you're driving your car, okay? And everything's going well. You've got uh, the windows down, there's warm air coming in. You're, you feel just so beautiful, sun is out. Uh, there may be the ocean here or the mountains, whichever you prefer. Uh, if you're in Cape Town, you'll see both, obviously. Gorgeous, right? Um, and uh, let's say there's a, a light that pops up on your dash and your car. Have you ever thought of taking a hammer and hitting that light so the light goes out? No, you'd be crazy to, right? Now, what does the light represent? It's a signal. So maybe you're low on air in your front right tire. Maybe when you put stuff in the trunk, you forgot to close you know, the hood. Maybe, okay, there's a seat belt off. Maybe you're low on windshield wiper fluid or oil. Aren't those signals something you want to know about? Of course. So let's say I feel fear in taking action. So first, is there a way to stop reacting and start responding? The answer is yes. Reacting happens automatically and we react at the highest level of our skill. Why? Because the subconscious pattern. But responding means that we're paying attention to the signal. We have enough pause time to then choose a response. So if I'm afraid or if I'm feeling doubtful or worried or stressed, wouldn't it make more sense and be more powerful if I could say, hmm, what's causing this signal? Like, am I afraid of losing money? Am I afraid of being emotionally hurt? Am I afraid of being abandoned, rejected? And like, what am I afraid of? Like, what am I really afraid of? Because it's usually not the thing that we're afraid of. But I'll give you an example. Um, people tell me, you know, it's a known fact that public speaking, okay, for many people is like higher than death as far as the fear. And I tell people, I said, there's not a human being that's afraid of public speaking. And he says, oh, no, I am afraid of public speaking. No, you're not. You're afraid of speaking in public and messing up and then being embarrassed or ashamed or judged or laughed at. That's what you're afraid of. So that means that maybe your self-image is what we need to work on, not public speaking. And if we worked on public speaking and upgrading your knowledge and skills on how to speak properly and how to set the right expectations and how to be prepared, then you wouldn't be afraid of public speaking. And if your self-image was strong, you would know that it doesn't matter if you make a mistake, everybody makes a mistake. It doesn't matter if you forget the words, everybody uh, does that. But that doesn't mean anything about who you are as a person or the value. It just means you made a mistake. And tell me one human being that hasn't made a mistake, that hasn't failed. So what if I taught you techniques to frame failure in a way that actually empowers you instead of disempowers you? Oh, you could do that? Yes, of course I could do that. Now, the absence of you knowing how to do that is causing ignorance. Ignorance just means not knowing. When we don't know, we have doubt. When we have doubt, we have fear and anxiety. When we have fear and anxiety, we don't take action. 
So the issue isn't the fear. The issue isn't the stress. The issue is you don't know how to manage it at the level you need to to move forward. That you can learn. This is amazing. You said we react at the highest level of our skill. And I think right. that is so profound. And it is. John, where do people even begin harnessing that kind of skill to start censoring themselves? Are there any tips, techniques that people can start implementing today that will make them feel different about their life and their emotions? Sure. There's, um, as you can see behind me, I know you read my New York Times bestselling book, The Answer, and I've got my newest uh, bestselling book called Inner Size. So let's back up for just a moment and ask ourselves a question. Let's say you wanted to um, make your biceps stronger. Okay. What would you do to make your biceps stronger? There are exercises that you can do to strengthen your biceps or your chest or your glutes or your abs or your legs or your cardiovascular system, right? We can exercise. Well, how do you strengthen your core neuro muscles? So is your self-image a neuro muscle that could be strong and powerful and unwavering and unstoppable? And can your self-image be meek and lacking and I'm not good enough and worthy? Can, can it be, you know, on that spectrum of, wow, what incredible self-image she has. And oh my God, he doesn't believe in himself. Could it be anywhere in between? Of course. So how do we strengthen self-image? Well, we can strengthen self-image by giving ourselves a very small goal and then following through to completion. So we now say, yeah, I did it. I don't care how small the goal is. Um, follow through to completion. Uh, feel a little bit of fear, do it anyway. Follow through to completion means I'm gonna have some self-trust, self-confidence and self-image of I am a goal achiever versus I allow fear to hold me back or I allow stress to hold me back. So now we can behave our way into a self-image that's more powerful. Um, let's go a different direction. And that's inside out versus what I just said, outside in. Can I close my eyes and can I repeat, I'm so happy and grateful that I'm developing a healthy, self-confident self-image of myself. Can I say the words? Can I activate the neurons in my brain that as I say the words and feel what those words are saying, I then visualize myself with a healthy, strong self-image? Yeah, I can do that. Well, here's what we know. If I can activate the neurons in my brain, whether it's through words, emotions, behaviors, or through activating something called the occipital lobe in the brain, one of the biggest lobes in the brain, I can actually fire neurons or brain cells in my brain. And if I do that, let's say every day for three to four minutes, um, nothing's gonna happen in day one, other than we're gonna feel good for that moment. Nothing's going to happen in day two and day seven, although we're going to feel maybe, hey, this is kind of like good. I feel good. But nothing happens in the first seven days of building your bicep muscle that you can really see. But on day seven, day 14, day 21, day 30, no differently than a Hollywood actor who gets a new script doesn't know the script when they first get it. But after a week of practice and rehearsal, after a month of practice and rehearsal, they don't need the script anymore. They can recite it and they can be the part. Oh, so if I repeat a pattern, thought, emotional behavior, language, over and over enough, and I follow through with acting that way, I could start to think and feel and behave in line with that new identity and self-image? Yeah. That's how you build your neuro muscle. Um, can I do that for self-confidence? Yes. Can I do that for beliefs that don't empower me? Can I choose a belief that will empower me? Yes. Like you weren't born with any beliefs. 
You weren't born with any fears. You weren't born with a self-image. You weren't born with any amount of confidence. Predispositioned genetic coding, yes. But we know that epigenetics overrides genetics. So I can actually deliberately and consciously let go of what isn't serving me or what may be weak, and I could deliberately strengthen it. Now, I might start with one minute a day, and I might end up with 15 minutes a day. Now, let me ask you a question. Would it be worth to invest 15 minutes a day to inner size so that you can have, be, become, experience whatever you choose in life? For me, it's worth it. I've been doing it for 40 years and I guarantee you it's worth it.